This is the 2019 Chevy Corvette ZR1, and today I'm going to show you around it. To do this, I've traveled to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where Chevrolet is unveiling the new 2019 ZR1 here at the Dubai Auto Show. Now, I didn't get to spend a lot of time with the new ZR1, but I did get to poke around it for about an hour and check out some of its cool quirks and features, and today, I'm going to show them to you. First, a quick overview. The ZR1 is the latest high-performance Corvette, and it was unveiled literally yesterday. It's the ultimate version of the seventh-generation Corvette called the C7, which came out for 2014, and it's lots above the regular Corvette, which has 455 horsepower, and the Z06 with 650 horsepower. Anyway, with that in mind, here's a little tour of the new ZR1. I'll start off with the most impressive thing about this car, and that's what's under this oddly shaped hood. I'll get to that in a minute. The engine in the new ZR1 is a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 with 755 horsepower and 715 pound-feet of torque. Yes, that's right, 755 horsepower and 715 pound-feet of torque. Just to give you an idea of where that stands, the last ZR1, which came out in 2009, had 630 38 horsepower and 604 pound feet. The new ZR1 has 117 more horsepower than its predecessor. And the Z06, which is currently the highest performance Corvette, has 650 horsepower and 650 pound feet. The Z06 does 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, and the new ZR1 has more than 100 more horsepower. But of course we can talk about the engine, or we can hear it. This is what the new Corvette ZR1 sounds like when it revs up. And from a second angle. Anyway, from back there you can see the giant wing, which brings us to the ZR1's next most interesting detail. That wing is absolutely huge, but it doesn't come standard with the car. Instead, you'll have two wing options, the low wing and the high wing. Unsurprisingly, this is the high wing, which comes with the optional ZTK performance package. More on that in a second. The wing is fixed in place, although it can be adjusted 5 degrees for more or less downforce, depending on your track setup. The drawback is you can't adjust it with the press of a button inside the car. Instead, you need to break out some tools, loosen these screws, and adjust it manually, which isn't exactly high-tech. To me, the most interesting thing about the wing is this. Check it out. When you lift up the hatchback to load in your luggage or your gear, it just barely clears the wing. There's maybe a quarter of an inch to spare. Obviously, the wing was intentionally designed with this in mind, so it could coexist with the hatchback. What it doesn't coexist with is actually putting your stuff in the car. You'll never be able to load anything over the wing since it's so high up, so you'll have to load everything thing from the sides, which may get annoying. Either way, in its optimal setting and conditions, the wing produces up to 950 pounds of downforce to keep the ZR1 on the road. Speaking of which, it's worth noting that Chevrolet has shared with me the new ZR1's curb weight. It's 3,560 pounds, which makes it 36 pounds heavier than the Z06. Practically identical. Anyway, back to the tour. And now we must move on to the other stuff, starting with the transmission. The ZR1 comes standard with a 7-speed manual, and it offers an optional 8-speed automatic. Chevy told me that the manual is more robust for track use, but the automatic is still a step above the Z06. My favorite thing about the automatic is the shift lever says 8-speed on it, spelled out as if that's some sort of bragging point, perhaps forgetting that the cheaper Camaro ZL1 has a 10-speed. Anyway, back to the other stuff. All ZR1 models come standard with carbon ceramic brakes, but I mentioned before the ZTK performance package. That's an option, and it includes the high wing along with improved performance tires and a more aggressive front splitter with carbon fiber end caps. Speaking of those carbon fiber end caps, this car is awash with carbon fiber. Chevy told me it's the most carbon fiber ever in a General Motors vehicle. This fender vent in front
front is made of carbon fiber. The side fender vent in back is carbon fiber. The rocker panel going down the side of the car is carbon fiber. The wing, of course, is carbon fiber. And check this out, like on all Corvettes, the removable roof panel is carbon fiber. Yes, the ZR1 has a removable roof panel, 755 horsepower and an open roof, so you can really hear that exhaust. Of course, the other interesting carbon fiber piece is up front. As you can see, when the hood is down, it looks just like a normal hood. But when it's up, you can see it actually has a giant hole in the middle like a hood donut. In fact, the piece of carbon fiber you see when the hood is closed is actually the top of the engine itself. And Chevy claims they've gone to great lengths to make the weave line up to the part that actually opens with the hood. So why the hole in the middle? According to Chevy, people didn't really like the see-through window on the hood of the last ZR1, and so they decided, and this is a direct quote, to hell with the window, we're just going to let the engine come right up through the hood. And so they did. Chevy says you can actually see this piece vibrating as you accelerate and drive. Beyond that, there are a couple of other interesting quirks and features I found in the new ZR1. One is the front end. It's not just slightly changed or tweaked, but rather completely new compared to the front of the standard Corvette for improved airflow. Next up, the engine is just ridiculously huge. Look at this thing from this angle, and you can see just how absurdly high up and tall it sits. It's got to be four inches higher than the engine in a normal Corvette. And remember, some of that height is just engine with no hood over it covering it. That would add even more height. Next up is badging. This car only has three visible ZR1 badges on the exterior, one in the middle of the rear and two more on either side of the hood donut hole. No fender badges or crazy ZR1 writing all over the outside like some cars. Inside, the ZR1 badging is even more subtle. It's basically limited to just this one little ZR1 logo behind the shifter that no one will ever see. Then again, when the car looks like this, you don't really need badging to get your point across. It's worth noting that this car does have ZR1 specific floor mats with this weird design on them. I don't know, I think that's supposed to be a tire? I'm also not so sure about this dial to change between the ZR1's drive modes. I've been in a lot of cars and I've seen a lot of drive mode selector buttons and they were all nicer than this plastic wheel with typical GM font on it. It's a bit of a letdown, especially as it's right in the middle of the interior. Oh, and speaking of fonts, check out the mirrors. We are, after all, in Dubai, so apparently this is Arabic for objects and mirror are closer than they appear. Like all modern Corvettes, this one doesn't have a traditional interior door handle. Instead, you push a button inside the car and the doors pop open electronically. And in case the electronics fail or the battery dies, there's a manual release on the floor to make sure you don't get trapped inside. Also worth noting is that this ZR1 has the Sebring Orange design package, which apparently gets you the orange paint, orange brake calipers, blue is the standard ZR1 caliper color, and orange stitching on the seats, the center console, lid and the gear lever shift boot along with these rather uh, dazzling orange seat belts. So that's a tour of the 2019 Chevy Corvette ZR1. But before I finish up, here's a little history lesson on the ZR1 so you can get some context on the ultimate Corvette. The original Corvette ZR1 debuted in 1970 with the C3 Corvette, though it's incredibly rare with just a few cars equipped with the option. Everyone knows the C4 Corvette ZR1, which came out in the early 1990s. And when it came out, it had 375 horsepower, even though the regular Corvette back then had only like 250. It was a monster. And like I mentioned, the C6 ZR1 came out in 2009 with 638 horsepower. So that's the 2019 Chevy Corvette ZR1. Now, Chevy didn't give me a lot of time with this car, and I certainly wasn't able to get behind the wheel and drive it, although I'm hoping that'll come soon. But either way, this is the most powerful road-going Corvette in history. It is certainly the ultimate Corvette, and it's coming to dealers in spring 2018. Now, Chevy has an announced performance numbers or pricing for this car yet, but if I had to guess, I would say 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds and base price of around $140,000. I guess we'll find out the truth soon enough.